morning. Good morning. The family is preparing to procession in. And if you are not a member of the family and sitting in the middle front, uh, I know there is some family that is sitting there. But if you're not part of the family, we're going to ask that you would allow the family to sit in the front. and worms desire to destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see whom I shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie on green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The earth is the Lord. In the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false, does not swear deceitfully, he will receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the Lord of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads over your gates, be you lifted up the everlasting doors. And the King of Glory shall come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord of Hosts. He is the King of Glory. Family, you may be seated as you come in. Family, you may be seated as you come in. I'm just asking that you be careful of the camera that's right in the middle before you. For those who are watching on the video stream and watching from Alabama and other parts of this country, because you've already, it's already getting knocked over. <laughs> Amen. Who is the King of Glory? He shall come in. I'm not worried about my soul. I'm not worried about my soul. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about my soul. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about my soul. I'm not worried. I'm not I got my ticket, got my ticket in my hand. I 
If heaven is not my home, then Lord, what shall I do? The angels, the angels are beckoning me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel, I can't feel, feel in this world, in this world, anymore. This world is not my home, and I'm, I'm just passing by all of my hopes and all of my treasures. They're all laid up on high. I miss my friends and loved ones who all gone on before. And I can't feel, I can't feel at home, Lord. Down here, Lord, 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 this world, this world is not my home. And all my treasures, they're all in the morning. Lord, I miss my friends and loved ones who were gone on before. And I can't feel, feel at home in this world. I said, this world is not my home, and I'm, I'm just passing by all of my hopes and all of my treasures, they're all laid up on high, Lord, I miss my friends and loved ones who've all they've gone on before. And I can't feel, I can't feel at home, Lord. Down here, Lord, 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 this world, this world is not my home. And I'm, all of my hopes and all my treasures, they're all laid up on high. Friends and loved ones who've all they've gone on before, and I can't feel, I can't, I can't feel, feel at home. I can't feel at home. I can't, I can't feel at home. 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 I just can't. I just can't. Folks keep talking about me, and I just can't. Feel at home. I can't feel at home. I can't feel at home. I just can't feel at home. Feel at home in this world. In this world.
You know I'm bound for Mount Zion, way out on the hill. You know that I'm bound for Mount Zion, way out on the hill. You know that I'm bound for Mount Zion, and if anybody don't make it, surely I will, surely I will. Well, I'm bound for Mount Zion. You know that I'm bound for Mount Zion, way out on the hill. You know that I'm bound for Mount Zion. And if anybody don't make it, surely I will, surely I will. Well, I started on this journey. It was a long, long time ago. I had some pain and some heartache, but I promised the Lord I'd go. I got my sword and my shield, and I'm gonna stay on this battlefield. And if anybody don't make it, surely I will, 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 I will, I will. Well, I'm bound for Mount Zion. You know that I'm bound for Mount Zion. Way out on the hill. You know that I'm bound for Mount Zion. Way out on the hill. And if anybody don't make it, surely I will. Surely I will. Well, I started on this journey. It was a long, long time ago. I had some pain and some heartache, but I promised the Lord I'd go. I got my sword and my shield, and I'm going to stay on this battlefield. And if anybody don't make it surely i will 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 i will i will if you don't make it i know that i will my sisters don't make it. I know I will. I will. If my brothers don't make it, I will. I will. I will. Well, I'm bound for Mount Zion. You know that I'm bound for Mount Zion. Way out on the hill, you know that I'm bound for Mount Zion. Way out on the hill, and if anybody don't make it, surely I will. Surely I will. And the church said, Amen. If anybody don't make it, Surely I will. Amen. Make sure that you will make it. We are bound for Mount Zion. Amen. To the family, we had a problem with the lift, and so thank you, Reverend Searcy. Thank you, choir. Um, I'm down for the opening prayer. Um, Um, Reverend Searcy told me, <laughs> since I'm the pastor, I need to officiate. I'm not changing nothing, he's changing it. And so out of respect to the pastor, so we're going to ask that you bow 
your heads with me. Father, we come and we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for the opportunity that you have blessed us to once again to be present, even in this time of sorrow. We pray, O oh God, for your blessings upon the family. We pray that you would keep them in your care. We thank you for Sister Rogers. We thank you for her life. We thank you for her family. We thank you, God, for 55 years of marriage, 55 years of faithfulness, when some people can't make it five years. You allowed them to be together 55 years. And so, oh God, we pray that you would touch Brother Rogers, touch his heart, touch his mind. Amen. Touch him, God. And we know that as much as he wants to show us how strong he is, that yet it's not easy. And he needs you, God. He's going to need you today, but he's going to even need you more on tomorrow. He's going to need you when he gets home. He's going to need you, Lord, as these holidays come upon us. Touch the children. Touch the siblings. Touch the family. Touch the extended family in the name of Jesus. God, we know you're able. God, we know you're able. God, we know you're able. We know you're able. We know you're able. So we pray that you do it right now. That you do it right now. In the name of Jesus. And we give you all of the praise and all of the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, do y'all do me a favor, you all? Let's give Brother Rogers a great big hand for his faithfulness to Sister Rogers. Come on, y'all can do better. Somebody, you ought to stand on your feet and just give him just that love, that care. Come on, bless him. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Hallelujah. Let me tell y'all something. Sister Rogers loved Brother Rogers. <laughs> she, loved, she loved her some Brother Rogers. Amen. And so we are praying. We are praying for him and for the family. We're going to have our scripture reading the Old Testament Psalms 27 by Marshall Rose, script of the New Testament by Sandra Munson, a prayer of comfort by our eulogist, the Reverend Dr. Charles Searcy, and then the choir will come back with their uh, musical selection at that time. Amen. Well, after the musical selection, we'll have the obituary by Sister Goldie Burton. Where's Sister Burton at? You back there? All right, we have something else for you to read as well. I'm going to ask one of the ushers to come get that and make sure she gets it. Amen. We're going to follow in that order. And the church said, Amen. Morning, church. Morning. Uh, I'll be reading from the King James Version, Psalms 27, 5 and 4. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after, yes, yes. that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, yes. to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. The secret of his tabernacle shall be he hide me, he shall set me upon a rock. Praise the Lord of the reading of his word.
To God be the glory. To Jim and the family, I cannot stand here and not say anything. What a beautiful soul. When I met Rebecca and Jim 33 years ago, me and my husband have been married 33 years. And she was just so happy to receive me. They both were into the family. We are like family to them. We're not friends, we are family. And always, they always received us as family. I know that you love me and my husband, and we love y'all. I will be reading John 14, 27 through 28. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, giveth I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come back again unto you. If you loveth me, you would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater. May God add a blessing to the reading of this word. Shall we pray? Beams of heaven as I go through this wilderness below guide my feet in peaceful way, turn my midnights into days. When in darkness I would grow, faith always sheathes a star of hope. And from all life's grief and danger, I shall be free someday. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we would be remiss if we just didn't say thank you for the life and for the works of Rebecca Rogers. There's so many people that she touched, the friends that she made along the way, her loving husband, her loving children, and neighbors and friends, and we can tell just by the life that she lived, when we look around and see all the many faces. But I stop by to tell you that Rebecca's all right now. And if we are to believe that there is a God, we're going to say that Rebecca is right there with him, looking down on us, saying that I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. I did all that was assigned to me to do. And Lord, the other day you decided to call me home. But I want everybody to know that all is well with my soul. For I'm finally free. No more crying. No more dying. No more sickness. No more pain. For I have overcome all of these things down here. And Jesus says in his word, the Lord I'm with you always, even until the end. And for those that are left here, let us cherish all the precious memories 
let us think about her, let us laugh and the things she used to do and the things she used to say, the things that helped us to become better people. Lord, we just thank you for it is in Jesus' name we pray. And they all said amen. Amen. Jesus, 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 <clears throat> Jesus, 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 what's his name? Jesus, 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 what's his name? Savior, Savior, he's my Savior, he's my Savior. What's his name? Jesus, Jesus. He's a healer. He's a healer. He's a healer. What's his name? Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, what's his name? Jesus, 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 he's my savior. He's my savior. He's my savior. What's his name? He's a healer. He's a healer. He's a healer. What's his name? Jesus, 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 Jesus. What's his name? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What's his name? Jesus, Jesus. What's his name? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lily of the valley. Bright and morning star. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. I said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And sometimes we just have to lean on back, LaWanda, and say, hallelujah, anyhow. Sometimes we have to look at one another and say, although I'm in this, I say, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Anyhow, Uncle Jim, if I could say one thing to you, I would say, God said, I would never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you until the end. Ain't Nanny's gone, Uncle Jim, but God is present. 
He is your present help in the time of sorrow. Uncle Jim, when you reach over sometimes and she's not there, I dare you to call on the name of Jesus. I dare you to lay on your face and cry out unto him. He'll meet you just where you are. To Trina, my cousins, Lawanda and Jim, trust him. Trust him with all your hearts and lean not. I said lean not to your own understanding. Trust him. Trust him at his word. I'm reading the obituary of my Aneni to my friends, my family. I love y'all. Love y'all. Rebecca Von Seal Rogers was a caring wife, loving mother, beloved and devoted Nana, sister and faithful friend. She gained her wings the morning of Monday, November 7, 2022, at the age of 76. She was born on March 13, 1946, in Troy, Alabama, to Willie Lee and Moselle Nee Flowers Walker. Ninny, as she was known by close family, came to know the Lord at an early age attending Bethel Baptist Church led by the late Reverend Tony. Proud member of the crowning 1966 class of Principal C.A. Griffin at Academy Street High School, she left Troy at the age of 19 to start the greatest part of her journey, following her big brother and sister, Billy and Joan, to Niagara Falls. Her marriage was the culmination of an already lifelong love and friendship. As she grew up with the younger six of her eight siblings across the street from the lasting love of her life, Jim Albert Rogers. United in holy matrimony at the Pike County Courthouse on June 24th, 1967 celebrating 25 years of marriage at their church home of over 50 years, Trinity Baptist Church of Niagara Falls in 1992. True to her nature, she enthusiastically executed her civic duties in the community. As a member of the Order of the Eastern Star, she has served incorporated. Professionally, she answered the call of education and child care having earned her associates in human services in early childhood education from SUNY, State University of New York, in Triple C, Niagara County Community College. She served as Sunday school teacher and black history coordinator at Trinity, was part of the Chat and Chew, and went on to serve with various local community centers and volunteer organizations, always serving her community. True to her nature, as she departed this life in her mansions await her, her parents, sisters, Joan M. Dexter, Rutha, Tina Maldonado, Martha Edwards, brothers Frederick Billy Johnson, and Willie L. Tusi Walker, Jr., and brother-in-law James Jack B. Rogers leaving to cherish her memory are her beloved husband of 55 years, Jim Albert Rob Rogers, sisters Tommy Jones and Shirley Peggy Williams, brother Jimmy Punjam Walker, sister-in-law Vivian Rogers, devoted daughters Tarina Von Seal Rogers Davis and Lawanda Ventrice 
Van Crease, Billy Murphy, doting son, Jim Aaron Rogers Jr., grandson, Wade Rogers Murphy, granddaughter, Ariana Rebecca Rogers, childhood friends, Ida and Arthur Robert Barnes and Willie Munson, and a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, other family and friends. Come on and bless the name of Jesus for the life and legacy of. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Trinity Baptist Church. Official church resolution of respect for Sister Rebecca Rogers. No matter what your trials are, or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He will go to all extremes, so if your cross seems hard to bear, and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will see you through. We are in place in this world for a limited time, and with the infant's birth, and with the infant's breath begins the race to the grave, a race everyone must run. Now death has come to one of our beloved members. On November 7, 2022, our dear sister was called home to be with the Lord. Whereas, on the providence of God, he has ended the life of Rebecca Rogers, Pastor Jimmy Hardaway Jr., Reverend Karen Anderson Hardaway, and the officers and members of Trinity Baptist Church of Niagara Falls, New York, feel that it is befitting to express their sympathy to the family during the passing of Rebecca Rogers. We commend you to him who knows best and will always be right. You have our sincere prayers. Whereas during the many years that Sister Rogers was at Trinity, she was a very devoted and faithful member. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by remembering this poem. When I must leave you for a little while, please do not grieve and shed wild tears and hug your sorrow to you through the years, but start out bravely with a gallant smile, and for my sake and in my name, live on and do all things the same. Feed not your loneliness on empty days, but fill each waking hour in useful ways. Reach out your hand in comfort and in cheer, and I in turn will comfort you and hold you near. And never, never be afraid to die, for I am waiting for you in the sky. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy kept in the church archives. To the family, we know you lost. Your loss is profound and your sorrow is great. But we want you to know that we share in your grief. More importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's game. Humbly submitted on the 14th day of November 2022, the officers and members of the Trinity Baptist Church in Niagara Falls, New York, Reverend Dr. Jimmy Hardaway Jr. is the pastor. God bless you. And the church said amen. I received a call from um, someone from the Eastern Star. Uh, they were trying to get a resolution here, and they said they were going to email us. Someone just asked, and I just I did just just check the email. It had not arrived as of yet, but we thank God for uh, the Eastern Star um, that she was a member of. And um, the person that called me, she asked me. She said, "Does it say in the obituary?" that she's a member of the Eastern Stars. I said, I don't know, but she wanted to be known. And so we thank God for their consideration and their prayers on behalf of the family. Amen and amen. At this time, we have remarks. 
uh, from family and friends, and they're respectfully asking that you would limit your remarks to no more than two minutes per person. But we ask that you would come. I'm sure that the family would love to hear or love to see those who would come at this time with their expressions of sympathy. Amen. I just would like to say that I am so grateful that I had an opportunity to be a part of Rebecca's journey. She was a wonderful, wonderful person, and she had a beautiful personality. I met her years ago through my husband, who was a friend, who is a friend of Jim. At that time, we would travel together, we did road trips together, we would just go out and have fun together. Uh, that's a lovely family here. And I, I, I really just, this is hurts me so, I know she's in heaven, but we miss her right here now. You know, I, um, <clears throat> Rebecca loved her family. She loved her extended family. She loved all of us, really. Um, she would love to travel. I told her one time, I said, Rebecca, do you ever have a chance to unpack? <laughs> she, said, she said, no, my husband and I, we like to get, I said, you all are on the road again. <laughs> so they would travel and they would have fun together. And um, it, it, she, I just don't know, it's so much I have to say about her. So two minutes, I can do, deal with that. Let <laughs> me just get through this. Um, as I said, Rebecca loved her, friend, her family, and she loved her extended family, and she cared about all of us. And she loved her husband. She could never say enough good things about Jim. He was her rock. But most importantly, she loved the Lord. So I know that she is in heaven, in glorious, having a great, glorious time. And we miss her still. Good morning, church. Good morning. This is kind of hard. I've been knowing Rebecca all my life. We started the first grade together in Troy, Alabama. And it's very, very hard. Jim and Rebecca are just like family and the kids. When I first came to Buffalo, I didn't know Rebecca was up in this area. I was going to buy my mother a dress at Lang Bryant downtown Buffalo. All right, all right. Rebecca was walking out the store and I was walking in and I hollered, Rebecca Walker! <laughs> and we embraced each other and hugged each other and we've been friends ever since, been staying in touch ever since. Now they said Jim and Rebecca been married 55 years. Well, they was together almost 60 years in high school, sneaking gym, sneaking across the field, going down. <laughs> My man. <All> right. <laughs> and when Rebecca started saying Jim, Jim was a cool dude in high school, dressed nice. I say, Rebecca be looking at him all the time, you know. So they end up getting married and had a wonderful, a beautiful family. And they just like my nieces and nephews. I love them dearly. And Jim, you know I'm here for you, buddy. You know I love you. So if you ever need me, you and your family, I'm right here. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I am Sister Juanita Mills, the District Grand Matron of the Eastern Stars of White Rose District Grand Chapter. Praise God. It is an honor to stand before you and see the demonstration of all this love here 
for our dear sister, Rebecca Rogers. We thank you for letting us have her for the duration that we had her. She was before my time, but I heard many great things about how dutiful she was. She loved being a star. And I just want to give you the um, condolences from the International Free and Accepted Modern Masons in Order of Eastern Star. And I believe there's other stars here. The pastor himself told me there's several members of Eastern Stars here. If there are any in the house, would you please stand? If you're able, or raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> please see me after the service. <laughs> Praise God. To God be the glory. God be with you. If there's anything that the sisterhood can do for you, please let me know. I have my business card with me, and I will leave it with whomever desires it. Thank you. How many know God is good? And this is a celebration. To the angel of this house, Pastor Hardaway, First Lady, and all the office, Jim and family, I can remember every now and then we used to go out to their home, and that sister would always have something for us to eat. Amen. Amen. She didn't talk very loud, but she had power. Yeah. And the reason why she had this power, she was connected to the power source. I don't care what kind of light you got. If you can't plug it into a power source that don't give any light. I used to, and I could think about her beautiful smiles. Amen. And she, like I said, she never talked very loud, but she did stuff. And I just want to say to Jim, the family, and back in those days, we really had love. How many know that love never fails? And she's displayed that kind of love. And I think of her, and I think about that beautiful flower garden. She truly was a blue violet, mm -hmm. a yellow jasmine, a white lily, a green fern, and a red rose. And one day, not too long ago, God looked at her and called, and called her the best title she could have. We get crazy with these titles. But he looked at her and said, Servant, you've done a lot. Come on home. And God bless you. Good evening. My name is Mrs. Fatima Hodge. I am a sister, a true sister like my other sister, Rebecca. My sister was faithful. She was a great woman, loved everybody. Didn't matter what color you were, she loved us all. She used to send me Christmas cards every year even she loved the dogs I got a Christmas card beautiful black dog that she must be worked it with but the life she lived was important we hear but what is your life stands for she was faithful, she was truthful, she was all of those flowers, the lily of the valley. Now you hear me? She wasn't no conflict. She was a truthful woman that loved the God. And most of all, she loved her family and friends. Especially the ones that didn't like her. She still 
Love to them. She showed us how to live, how to help one another. I can say to the family right here in front of my eyes, the Lord is your shepherd. Just like he's all our shepherd, this race that we are toiling on right now, you better put God in it. You must have a relationship that man cannot give you, but nobody but my person is Savior, which is Jesus Christ and God. She was faithful to her church. She walked the walk and did, you know how some of us talk to talk. But she was a woman of God that talked to talk and walked in faithfulness. And that's what God is looking for us. All faithfulness. The life you live will speak for itself. This is not our home, but we passing through. When the Lord say your race is done and call your number, give it up. You have been to the end. My sister, Rebecca Rogers, had gave the time to God and Jesus and blessed this family and every one of you that are here showing love in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. We're going to have two more because I know that they have to get to the cemetery as well. And so I know that everybody wants to talk. And Sister Rogers liked to talk. <laughs> Sister Rogers liked to talk. And I, everybody can't talk. And um, we, we are exceeding our two minutes as well. And so we don't want to um, delay getting to the cemetery. So how many people do I have? One, two, three. We'll have three more. So, well, family, family's different. Family can talk as long as they want to talk. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The wireless mic, I got it here. Um, family can talk as long as they want. I'm, I'm talking about everybody else. Amen. And, and no disrespect. No disrespect. Um, but um, it's, it's, it's usually when we do this during the service, it's not us, it's the cemetery. That, that have their rules, amen. And I don't want Michael to be looking at me cross-eyed in, in a few minutes, amen. Because he will look at you cross-eyed, amen. So, my brother. Thank you. My name is Willie Johnson. Um, uh, my dad was Billy Johnson. And my auntie was some, a special woman. She had a special heart for anybody, but she really had a special heart for me, um, I would call her any time and talk to her about anything, and she would give me the best advice in the world. She just was a loving woman. And I used to work down the street from where they live at now. And even though Uncle Jim worked all the time, he stayed working. And, but she says, I made this food. She says, Uncle Jim ain't going to eat it, but you can come on over here and get some lunch because I got leftovers. And she always kept a, a good meal. But I respect my aunt, and every Mother's Day, which I'm going to continue doing, is call her and say Happy Mother's Day. I don't care where they are, where they're at, she'll make sure she say thank you. And I love you, and I love this family. You are the first. And uh, when my parents passed away, Uncle Jim and Aunt Rebecca stood up and took us into their wings, and i never forget that. They stand strong for us at the Johnson family, and they will always be in my heart. I got heart for them all over the world. When I'm traveling I call I talk to them me and Trina have been I grew up together and just we still close I know she cussed me out sometimes but it's okay and she won't say she gonna she said I'm, I'm gonna tell my mother on you she said all the time but, and she do she just she just like my sister so that's what's up but thank you guys for coming and enjoy the celebration and the home going to my aunt and I'm sure she hear y'all thank you
Somebody help her. Just lower it. You can lower it. There you go. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good, Good morning. afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. My name is Mary May, and I'm a product of Niagara Falls. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina now, but I was here in July this year. I spent the day with my friend Rebecca, and there was another lady there also, Miss Artis. She's passed on. It was the three of us. And I had a paper I had written, and it's to Jim, my brother, the children, the sister, the brothers. My heart is broken because Rebecca was my good friend. And I loved her unconditionally. And we always talked. And Trina reminded me that she said, Sister May, you and Mom would be on the phone for hours. I wondered what you all were talking about. <clears throat> but we would be talking about this and that, and this and that. But I thank God for knowing her. And I'm getting a little bit hot because my sinus is working. But I know one thing. I said, I told her when I saw her last. I said, I might not be coming back this way. I said, but you know what? God fixed it. Mm -hmm. That I had to come back. Yes. And I'll keep coming back. And whatever, because this is my home. And Rebecca, I'll say, would be missed. She's all of those things. That sister, that mother, that wife. Oh, what a precious wife. And then, Jim, I could talk about him, too. But I got to say this one little thing. I met them back in probably 1986. And the first time I met them, I told Brother Rogers, I said, I want to meet your wife, because we were going to work on a program together in the Eastern Stars. And he was too long. So I decided to call Rebecca, went out to their house, introduced myself. And I said, because I want to know you. I got to work with your husband, but I want to know you. So that's what I did, and that's how our relationship started. They trusted me to stay in their house and keep their house only the first month I had met them. So that friendship, that trust, I appreciate Jim for that. And God knows I loved her. But, and I love all the children, had special things with Jim, <laughs> football game and stuff. And special things with Trina and Lawanda. Love you all. Godspeed. Be absent from the body, present with the Lord. Amen. Whatever. Thank Amen. you. I'll be very quick. I just want to thank the Rogers family for allowing my family to be a part of theirs for 47 years. Amen. We live across the street. Amen. They're the finest people that we could ever have as neighbors. Amen. And in final, I want to say, it's not if we remember Rebecca, but it's how we're going to remember Rebecca. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I just wanted to get up. You know, my family say I, I got a big mouth, and my mama always said I talked a lot. And so do Reverend Hardaway, but I'm not going to be long. But why I got everybody in this room, somehow or, or somewhere y'all have met my mother, and she has touched y'all. That smile, you will never forget it. But I just want you to know, from my family, my father, my sister, my brother, we thank y'all for the love that y'all gave her and showed her. 
y'all will never know how much we appreciate the love that y'all have shown us during this time. It has been a hard one, but we all know that she in a good place. Amen. We down here, we the ones that got to suffer. Amen. She up there, she having a good time with, with my Uncle Jack and, and, and Aunt Tina and Aunt. But we down here, they looking at us feeling sorry for us because, excuse my language, because we down here in the hell. And she up there in heaven having a good time. I had made peace that my mom is okay, no more pain, no more hurting, no more none of that. Because we all know at the end of the day, God is in charge. But I want y'all to know she loved everybody in this room that she has touched that she have called, that she have told you that she loved you. She don't never lie. She said she loved you. She loved you. To all her nieces and nephews, I don't got to tell y'all. Y'all know y'all ain't any love, y'all, with all her heart. Her sisters and her brothers, ain't Tommy. I'm going to start watching Bold and Beautiful so I can call you and talk about it. <laughs> ain't Peggy. I might can't make you no chocolate cake, but I'm going to make you a pound cake on your birthday. <laughs> just like my mama did. I just want y'all to know, I can't never take my mama's place. And I'm the oldest, my sister and my brother. I guess is where my niece get it. I'm the boss lady, and I'm going to continue to be the boss lady. <laughs> because, like I said, I'm going to take care of my dad because I told my mama, I'm going to make sure he's going to be all right. I can't take her place, I can't be no, but I'm gonna make sure, my brother and my sister, we gonna make sure my daddy gonna be all right. He gonna, we gonna, and everybody that has reached out to him, when it's all said and done, please continue to support and lift them up because I can't do it by myself. But I know a family that supports us like y'all do, we gonna be all right because y'all gonna continue to lift us up. And please know from the bottom of my heart that I love you, I love you, and I love you, and I will never, ever thank, can thank y'all again. But we're going to celebrate Rebecca today. We No, no more tears. We're going to celebrate my mother because she was a great woman, and she was our queen. And thank y'all for everything y'all have Amen. done. Amen. God bless your heart. Thank you to everyone who has shared with us on this morning. Trina. When did I ever say you had talked to me? <laughs> Maybe you thought that's what I said. <laughs> no, but Trina, Trina, we love that she comes when she comes to service. And um, when Trina uh, was ill and we didn't know out, no, I would call her mother to find out, is Trina okay? And so we're going to miss her. Brother Rogers, we thank you for allowing my wife and I to come to visit her before the pandemic and being able to talk. And I know that um, when you saw me call her, you knew I was calling to talk to her, so you just let her answer the phone. Eh? <laughs> well, we are grateful unto God for her life and for sharing. And so on behalf of our family, we extend our condolences as well as the Trinity Baptist Church. Amen and amen. Choir's going to come um, with their selection. Following that, our eulogist, the Reverend Dr. Charles Searcy, minister of the Third Presbyterian Church in North Tondawanda, will come and share with us. After that, the music selection, and we shall continue in that order. Amen. I'm 
I'm going up beyond. I'm going up beyond. I'm going up beyond to be with my love. I'm going up beyond, I'm going up beyond to be with my Lord. Anybody ask you where I'm going, where I'm going? If anybody asks you where I'm going, where I'm going soon, I'm going out beyond. I'm going out beyond. I'm going out beyond to be with my love. Yeah, I can take the pain, the heartaches it brings, comfort in knowing I'll soon be gone. God give me grace. I run this race to the Savior face to face. Oh, going up beyond, going up beyond, going up beyond to be. Trinity Baptist Church, to the family, to all those that are assembled, I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The other day when I got the call, my mind began to think when the gentleman got up here and said that he was coming out of Lane Bryant and ran into Rebecca. When I first met Rebecca and Jim, Glenda Glover introduced us. Rebecca was in the garage. I guess she was canning some beans or peppers or something. 
And, uh, and I always talk about how sharp her and Jim always look. And when they dance together, they look like Fred Astaire and Ginger Rock. <laughs> And and, 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 and and Rebecca would say, I could be sitting at home, and Jim would come in from work, and he'd say, let's, and I'd say, go. <laughs> the other night, I was talking to Jim, and he said, you know, we traveled all the states in the continental USA except two. You're going to get there, brother. You're going to get there, but she's going to be right there with you. Uh, uh, um, then I was thinking about, about how sharp she was. She never met a stranger. She always looked good. And I don't care if she saw you at tops anywhere, she go hug you and kiss you. And I told her, I said, Miss Roger, you, you always sharp. And she told me about a dress shop on the boulevard. I don't know if any of y'all women remember it was Bonicello's. I bought my wife's wedding dress there. I bought all my wife's clothes from Bonicello's because Rebecca was so sharp and she made look dressing up look good. <laughs> she, she did that, but let's get to the scripture seeing as though y'all took up all my time. I'm going to give y'all seven and a half minutes and I'm gone, okay? Proverbs, the 28th chapter, yes, sir. 10th verse, an excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than Jew. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with her willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. I was thinking about that. You know, we had, we had traveled to... New Jersey one time for Sean and Omni's wedding, and I got there, and who did I look up and see? Rebecca and Jim Rogers. I'm like, what, what y'all doing here? And, and, and they were there celebrating the wedding, and I said, boy, this is, I, I said, it's a small world. You can't never go nowhere and say you don't see nobody because somebody always see you, okay? I don't care where you go. You think you can run, but you can't hide. Um, the heart, or the valued heart, of a virtuous woman is precious. More precious than diamonds and ruby and gold is priceless. You know, have you ever have something that you, you, you value so much that you'll do anything to hold on to it, anything to keep it, because it may not be beautiful or uh, or, or, or inviting to someone else, but it's also inviting and beautiful to you. And Rebecca was a precious woman. And Jim referred to her as my lady. My lady. Personalizing my lady. You know, and, 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 and she, the same way, reciprocated unto him. And she was uh, uh, noticeable. She, whenever she goes into her room, she was always noticed. And like the man say, she didn't speak too loud. But she was noticeable the way she walked. She walked with confidence. She walked knowing that she was somebody. And she, and she wasn't going to let nobody deny her. She was undeniable. I remember when Peanut was a little boy and we used to catch him in the driveway and pop him upside the head. Rebecca told us, she said, y'all better leave that little boy alone. I went to the army and came back and I got to look up at Peanut. <laughs> and now I regret all them times that I popped him upside his head because one day he might have a flashback. <laughs> and, 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 and not only that, but she was beautiful. She was beautiful the way she walked. Like I said, you know, she walked, she walked proud. She never... Uh, uh, she always kept her head up and always had that smile. And I ain't never seen her rag and she was always sharp, even when she was around the house. And then the woman could cook, too. Oh, Lord Jesus. Uh, you can bless my spirit that she could cook. And, and her hospitality and her trustworthiness, and she was a, a, a sincere person. If she told you something, you can bet your bottom dollar she meant it. You know, she would, uh, 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 
would talk to Glenda and try to give Glenda advice, but everybody know Glenda knew Glenda was just going to do it her way. Uh, and, and, you know, and she was strong and she, she had, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, she, was, she had integrity. You know, everybody got up here and said something about us, said something good, something about, you know, I didn't hear anything or anybody say anything bad about her. And this is probably one of the easiest things to do because either people allow on you when you're living or they lie for you when you're dead and then they try to put you in a place you ain't going. Been there, done that, and got a t-shirt. <laughs> Loveliness. And she loved her husband. Jim was the apple of her eye. Her affection. And she said, I'll be there. And Jim said, let's. And I say, go. I say, well, I used to call it a road run. I say, every time I turn around, you and Jim going somewhere. And that's 55 years. They let murderers go after seven. <laughs> huh? And, 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 and her family. She loved her children. She provided for her children. She made sure that the house was a, a, a place that Jim could come and feel comfortable and safe and, and, and not have the stresses of the world or the things that he left outside. She provided a peaceful atmosphere for when he came home. And not only that, but she would comfort her husband. She would encourage her husband while she was maintaining a strong commitment to the family. Not only to the family, but to the church, to the Eastern Star, or whatever she was uh, uh, affiliated with. And Jim says, I take care of my wife. He said, that was my job, to take care of my wife. A lot of folks don't take care of their wives, or their husbands, or comfort them, or encourage them, or, or, or to speak a kind word. You go out there all day long, you catching hell in this world and got to come home and catch hell. That's not good. But she provided a safe haven for him that he could come and feel comfortable and loved and appreciated. The heart of a valued woman is soundness in her mind, great in her wisdom. And then she was kind. She was a giver. You know, you meet some people that got to give me I want and got to have. Huh? If not, I got some of them in my family y'all can borrow. Uh, but she was a giver. And she gave from her heart. She gave and loved. She never uh, asked or said, look, I did this for you. I did that. She did it because the love of her heart. And not only that. She had reverence for her God. She had reverence for her husband. She had reverence for her church. Everything she did, she had reverence for. She did it with the spirit of excellence. And there's a difference when you do things in a spirit of excellence. And I often tell this story about love. Yes, we love our children. We love certain people and when certain people come to us and demanding us or pulling on us and asking for certain things here take it i love you but it's the way i gave it to you here baby take this me and jim was talking the other night i said you know uh uh i celebrate christmas every day i celebrate valentine's day every day all because i don't need somebody to tell me when to be nice to somebody else. When you can be nice to somebody all along and got away. When my child come to me and say, Daddy, I need a coat. What I'm saying, wait till Christmas? Is she out there freezing? No, no. So you be good. And they were good for each other. And now, 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 now. And then she had the heart of God. And when you have the heart of God, in the love of God, then you can love like God. I believe the other morning, on the 7th of November, around 5 a.m. in the morning, God dispatched his angels to come down and say, I'm going to place you in a building not made with the hands of man, but eternal in the heavens. 
come on up, Rebecca. I know you're tired. I know you're suffering, but yet you don't want to see your husband suffer. You don't want to see your children suffer. So I'm going to bring you home. I'm bringing you home. And they was right there with her. When she took her last breath, Jim called me. He said, they thought we was having church up in there. We had got happy. We were singing. We were praying. In the midst of our sadness. Huh? Because she had reverence for her God. She had reverence for her husband. Reverence for her family and her loved ones and friends, but yet she knew it was time to go. And the obituary says she accepted the Lord at an early age. But before I go, I'm going to tell you this. Do not use the church to hobo your way to hell. If you're going to hell, stay out there and bust it wide open. Don't come to church dressed up with nowhere to go. Rebecca knew a long time ago where she was going. She knew who her Savior was. She knew the commitment of family and values and taking care of children. She took her commitment seriously. Remind me at the time the monkey and the buzzard went for a ride and, and the buzzard began to do this and the monkey told him, you better straighten up and fly right. But when it's all said and done, when we sang our last song, prayed our last prayer, stuck our sword into the sand of time and went in the room to come out no more. I'm quite sure you want to hear the words that Rebecca heard the other morning. Well done. Well done. My good and faithful servant. Come on, I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to elevate you now. You don't have to suffer no more. You don't have to cry no more. You ain't even got to die no more because it's all done. Jim, every now and then when you get lonely and you feel like you want to be led, you say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. When you go through the house and the house seems like it's a little dark, you can say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Yeah. And every, every now and then, when you feel like you want to hide yourself or shield yourself from the cares of this world, you say, rock of ages, cliff for me. Let me hide myself in thee, because soon and very soon, soon and very soon, we go see the king. The man that died for us. The man that rose for us. The one who declared he had our power given unto him in heaven and in earth. Power to make that man, that woman, that boy, that girl do right. Yes. And then, then, then we could sing the song. When we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that would be. When we all see Jesus. When we all get to heaven, mama be there, daddy be there, sister and brother be there. But that's all right, I want to see Jesus. <laughs> mama and daddy may not have made it, but I want to see Jesus for myself. And like I said, based on the premise, if there is a God, Rebecca is up there singing and shouting and praying and thanking God that things were as well as they were. And if you want to see Jesus and you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin while the blood is yet running warm in your veins, you have an opportunity to get it right. Tomorrow is not promised to no man. Got a phone call yesterday after church. Two phone calls. Two people dear and near to me have passed. And, you know, every now and then you ought to check on one another. Yesterday I had people bring the people they didn't like to church. We had a nice crowd in church yesterday. I said, next week, bring, bring the people that you like. 
I, you see, I, you laugh if you want to. We're going to leave here one day. And whether you re we used to play hide and go to see, ready now, here I come. One day he go call and you, can't, you can run, but you can't hide. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of Sister Rebecca. We thank you for the mark that she left on all of our lives. If it was just a phone call or a meal or a smile or hospitality or helping. But Lord, in the days to come, we would that you would comfort a family and a husband and a loved one. There might be some dark days ahead. But Lord, you said, Lord, I'm with you always. You would never leave nor forsake us. And every now and then when we think about Rebecca, let us think about those precious memories that when it's all over for us, that someone might say, that person helped me along the way. Lord, we thank you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. And they all said, Amen. Amen. It's to the family, to the friends, the final interment for our sister Rogers will be in the Acacia Park Cemetery. We will make a processional from the church to the cemetery. If you are going to process to the cemetery, please make sure you use your bright lights and your flashers, and please be mindful of the traffic as we make our way. We're going to ask the gentlemen who are the pallbearers to please come forward uh, to my right, the gentlemen who are going to serve as pallbearers. We're going to ask the rest of the church to please stand. Thank you. God has, God has smiled on me. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. And it's all because, yes, he has. And he has set me free. God has, God has smiled on me. 